Okay, uh, welcome to another video. This one is uh, is going to be a little bit of a departure from what I've been doing recently. Uh, this one comes as a request, and uh, it's a request from a former student um, that I kind of feel like I abandoned. And so I wanted to make sure I gave her a hand here in learning a tool that she had been promised she would learn. And, uh, and so I want to make sure that uh, she gets an overview of that. And so... That's what this video is going to be about. Um, the video is about creating clothing in Marvelous Designer and bringing it into ZBrush. Um, so I'm going to be starting off with ZBrush here. I've got one of my base meshes here. Now I uh, I have this model anatomically done. Um, I she has several subdivisions up to 1.4 million vertices here. Um, with the the style of anatomy that I wanted her to have, and uh, and what I'm going to be doing. In order to create the clothing in Marvelous Designer, I'm going to be exporting her at uh, at her lowest subdivision level. Now, it's not important that it's the lowest. What is important is your vert count. And you can see here that her lowest vert count is 22,000. And it, I want to be in that neighborhood. I want to be around 20,000. The higher your vert count is on your avatar, your, your base model, um, the worse the software is going to perform. So 20,000 is kind of a decent number that uh, still allows me to capture all of the shape of the anatomy without uh, without really worrying too much about breaking the software. So I'm going to go to my tool palette and export this base mesh. And uh, I'm just going to create, a in my projects here, a new folder, um, which I'll just go and call uh, Marvelous Demo. And... Uh, in here, I'm going to create a new folder called OBJ for my object files, and I'll go and name this Avatar. And I'll export her as is. Now, once that's done, I'm done within ZBrush, at least for the time being. And I'm now going to bounce over into Max. Now, the reason we're going to be using Max is that Marvelous Designer is a simulation software. It's a physics simulation. It is simulating the way that cloth behaves in the real world. And whenever anything is simulated, the scale of things is really important. Um, you know, if you were to picture the Statue of Liberty with a piece of fabric draped over her, then picture something the size of an action figure with a square the same dimensions draped over that. The types of wrinklings and the types of folds that you're going to going to be different between those two things, even if they're the same shape of a human being. And so scale is really, really important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my avatar here in a max, and I'm going to make sure that she is set up in metric. The software we're using, Marvelous Designer, is going to use metric, so I want to make sure that my, my avatar is metric as well. So I'm going to go File and Import. And I'll go and grab from my Marvelous Demo OBJ folder my avatar. And I'm going to import her as is. And there she is there. Now before I do any kind of scaling or anything to her, uh, it's probably best to make sure that Max is set up the way you want it. So I'm going to go to Customize and Unit Setup. I'm going to make sure that my System Unit Setup is set to 1 unit is 1 centimeter. With that done correctly, I can now begin scaling her up. So I want to make her um, about 5'6". And so I'm just uh, Googling here in the other window. 5'6 uh, in uh, centimeters. And that's going to give me 167.64, um, which is 5'5". Five five. So I'm just going to round this up. I'm going to make 168. So... I'll just create a box here in Max. I don't care about its footprint. I'm just going to make it about as large as her. And then I can go set its height um, to be 168. When I do that, this is now going to give me, in dimensions, the, uh, the scale that my avatar actually should be. So I can see that she's going to be off. Um, which is not surprising when I originally made this character. Uh, she was meant to be quite a bit smaller, quite a bit uh, more petite than 5'6". And so uh, I'm just going to go into my scale tool. And I'm going to scale her up until the top of her head crests the box. And I don't even need to be incredibly accurate with this. Um, as you know, that would be make her 5'6 exactly. And a little bit taller is a little bit taller. Um, but now I'm, I'm in the range of where I want her to actually be. 
I can delete that box and most important, I reset the X form on this. Now, I'm just gonna export this and place it right over top of the other OBJ. Now the reason I'm doing this is that I don't end up I don't want to end up with a bunch of avatars in here. Um, that when you do that, you run the risk of losing track of which is which. And so I'm going to keep a single OBJ avatar here that I'll overwrite. Um, the other thing that I need to do, remember that the clothing is going to end up on her in uh, in ZBrush here. And so while I'm at my lowest subdivision level, I'm going to import the avatar file over top. This is going to rescale the ZBrush file. You can see that her eyes here have not been rescaled. Um, but this will rescale the ZBrush file here to compensate and to match. So I'd have to go and re-add those eyeballs in or scale them up and move them. Also worth going and saving this now. So now she's the right scale in all the software packages. This is Marvelous Designer. And this is where we're going to be creating clothing. Now, for this example, I'm going to do nothing more than just a very simple t-shirt. But the process is exactly the same regardless as to what kind of clothing you make. It's just a matter of changing the pattern up and what have you. So the first thing we need to do is bring our character in that we can dress. So I'm going to go to File, Import OBJ, and I'll go and select for my projects, Marvelous Designer, OBJ, and Avatar. I'm going to be opening this OBJ. If you needed to add a dual or a second uh, avatar, something else you wanted to drape clothing on, we could add it to the scene. That wouldn't replace the one that was there. It would actually just add it to it. Um, this is going to be coming in as an avatar. And we used centimeters. And so everything else is okay. I'm just going to hit OK. And it'll load in the OBJ. And we should see her pop up in the world here. Something like this. Now, this avatar editor that is opened along the way uh, is a means of, uh, of being able to put your patterns in the right place before you simulate. And so what you can do with these would be to just go and select the, um, the cylinders here. So these ones are for her arms. And I'm going to use the down arrow, and I'm going to go and place them a little bit closer to her arms. I'll grab the shoulder pads here, and again, lower those down onto her shoulders. These are her legs here, and you can see these things are all really, really big and what have you. Um, I'm not going to bother doing this. It takes a long time to set this up, and I'm really, in the end, I'm not going to bother with them too much. But uh, you can kind of see how this would work here once you get them all in the right place. Um, I'm just going to close this, and all this should disappear here. If not, we can go into our avatar display and turn off those little green volumes and turn off the little blue dots. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is just go and tweak the color of my avatar here. Um, this is just going to make sure that she's uh, um, not going to interfere with the coloring of the clothing. So I, I generally would do this, just make them a flat black kind of thing. Um, and if you wanted to, you could change the drop down of the type of material here um, to something like velvet, which will um, give you less reflectivity in the object. So you get this uh, just mannequin that we can dress. Now, on the uh, left-hand side of the viewport here, or this left-hand side viewport, this is our 3D viewport. And uh, one of the first things you're going to do when you use Marvelous Designer is go into your Preferences and your Gizmo and uh, switch this over to World Coordinates. Um, it, is a, uh, it is a pain in the butt, the default that they use. Um, the other thing that you want to do is go into your, um, your Preferences and your... Uh, somewhere in here is the Settings. Simulation properties, camera properties. That's not what I want. User settings, here it is here. So under settings, user settings. Um, you're gonna wanna go in here and you're gonna wanna go to view controls and you can see you can actually drop this down to different software packages. Um, if you're used to 3ds Max, then uh, you can use the 3ds Max preset. Um, they've also got Maya and other things in there as well too, which will allow you to navigate this window the way you're already accustomed to doing. The right viewport is your two-dimensional viewport, and it's kind of best to think of this as a large sheet of fabric um, with a block out of your avatar in place in here, so you can kind of see the scale of your avatar. Uh, this is going to allow us to, uh, to go and draw in the pattern that we want. 
there's a grid in here and if you notice she's just shy of one of the lines in the grid um, that probably indicates to me that these are um, there are probably 17 of these squares in height um, being that she was one uh, 178 in height or 168 in height um, that probably means that this is the 170 centimeter line and so if you were to count these up my guess would be you'd hit 17 there and if I zoom in you can see that at some point that grid will actually turn into again a subdivision of grids and we'll get centimeters here instead of decameters now the idea is going to be to uh, start creating a pattern for your clothing um, above each of the viewports are tools specifically used in those viewports so all of the tools above the 3d viewport are for use in the 3d viewport and all of the tools in the 2d viewport or above the 2d viewport are for use in the 2d viewport so i'm going to begin by going and grabbing my polygon tool and uh, this is going to allow me to trace out the shape of a pattern so this operates very much like the spline tool from 3ds max and uh, i'm just going to use my template here to go and draw out if you hold shift you can snap this thing to every 45 kind of thing um, and so i'm just going to go in and kind of very quickly draw out the shape of a t-shirt like this when you close off the uh, the shape the software will uh, realize that it is a closed shape and it'll fill it with fabric. Now the fabric in use is going to be the one with a check mark over here on the right, default fabric one. And there are properties for this if we were to go and select it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, my throat is uh, bothering me. Um, so uh, if we were to go to select this um, fabric here, you can see the properties for the fabric are down here. Um, it's rendering and you know texture stuff here, as well as the physical properties. So we can actually use this drop-down list and pick different kinds of fabric. So again, you get that by selecting the uh, selecting the fabric from the uh, the menu here. Now I'm going to uh, go to my second tool here. This is the pa edit pattern tool. And this allows me to grab vertices and manipulate them. So I can do something like this. It allows me to also select edges, which I can do like this, which is really nice. And uh, I'm just going to try and get this to look a little bit more t-shirt like. So maybe something a little bit more like that. I'm going to bring that armpit up a little bit as well. And uh, you can see this is really, really blocky. You'll also notice it's only half of a shirt. And uh, that's done on purpose as well. Uh, I'm going to go and use this tool here. So this is the edit curve point tool. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to click on an edge and drag and you can move the curvature of that line. Um, you can do this as many times as you want. So you can make all kinds of weird curvy shapes. Uh, and you'll notice that these curve points are red in color or orange in color, whereas the actual vertices are black in color. And that's kind of an important distinction here as well. Uh, you can also click on one and hit delete remove it <coughs> excuse me so um now that i've got this which appears to be about half the uh the shape of the shirt that i want here i'm going to move this one out just a little bit further what i'm going to do now is i want to uh, make the other side of the shirt the symmetry side of the symmetrical side now if i want there to be a seam down the middle i can actually just make a symmetrical copy um, but if i want this to be one piece of fabric on the front what I can do instead is I can grab the edge along which the uh, symmetry happens and if I right click on that edge I can go down to the bottom and unfold my fabric and it'll ex essentially treat the pattern that we had made as though it were uh, symmetrical and there was a edge down the middle so I now have a perfectly symmetrical um, front of the shirt you notice that it was created in 3d as well and where it exists in 2d directly affects where it's placed in 3d so i drew it in front of her body and as a result it's placed in front of her body now i'm going to move this towards the avatar as close as i can get it here um without you know penetrating the body though even just a little bit of penetration is going to be fine the next thing i want to do is i want to make the back of the shirt i'm going to copy the shirt Control c and Control v will paste a copy over here now this copy is going to be to the side of the avatar so in the 3d world we're looking at it from the side of the avatar now it's important to note that there's a, a normal on these things 
So there's an inside and outside. If you look at how bright the color is here, and then you look at how dull it is on the inside, that's important to note. So when I go to put this piece of fabric on her, I'm going to have to rotate it around and place it on her back. Something like that. Now I'm going to edit this pattern a little bit. I don't want there to be such a large sweeping neck hole here. So I can grab this vertex and delete it. And the software will compensate and give me a straight edge through there. Which I can also just go and add a little bit of curvature to. Next we'll make the, uh, the sleeves for this. So if you go to your um, edit pattern tool and you select one of the edges over inside of our property editor, it'll tell us exactly how long that edge is, 22.07, which because this one was a copy should give me the exact same length, 22.07. So 44.14, or in this case 15, which means it's not exactly 107 here, um, is going to give us the double size of this. So I'm gonna go and create a box so this is the uh, polygon tool that we used earlier. This one is going to be the rectangle tool. And uh, I'm just going to go and click and uh, drag this out to create a square pattern or a rectangular pattern. I can also single click and type in some values. So that was 44.15 that I wanted, like so. And this is going to become the sleeve for my shirt. So if I go and select this edge, it is 44.45. Uh, which is not actually that I wanted it to, to be 1.5, so maybe we'll move this one in. And I'm just going to look at those numbers here as I do this. I'll have to zoom in to do this. And you can see I'm at... Uh, it's snapping all over the place here. So maybe what I'll do is I'm going to bring it in and uh, snap it. I'll just right-click instead of letting it go, and I'll just type in 0.3. And that'll move it exactly um, the distance that I wanted it to, so there should be 44.15. Now, I'm going to end up having to move this again anyway. This is not the proper shape for a sleeve here. Um, what I'm going to need to do is add another vertex in the middle. So this tool here is my Add Vertex. And if I click on this line, it'll add a vertex. If I want to place it somewhere specific, I can right-click on the line. And here, I can type in 50% for the ratio between the left and the right. And when I hit OK, that point is now exactly uh, in the middle. Now, I'm going to bring that point up a little bit, and I'm going to start shaping this a little bit more uh, into an S-curve, which is kind of what we should get in the shape of a sleeve. So again, I'm going to use my Edit Curvature tool, and I'll curve one of these points up, like so, and I'll curve one of them. I'll let this catch up. Try that again. So I'll drag this one up, and I'll drag this one down until I'm getting this kind of nice S-curve in here. Now you can see that that's also altered um, the distance here. It's now 26.84. And so I'm going to bring this edge in. And you can see that it's altering the curve because moving that edge did not move these points. So I'm going to move it somewhere about here. You can see that we're now at 23.9. So I can bring this in a little bit further, edit my curve again, oops, I'll bring this one a little bit closer here, so there. Now instead of trying to reproduce this on the other side, you know, now that I've got this shape that I'm quite happy with, um, it would be really, really tough to duplicate that exactly on the other side. So what I can do instead is I can go and add another point at the bottom. Again, I'm going to put this at the 50% mark. That way it's exactly in the middle. And if I delete, whoops, if I delete these two vertices, that'll snap this thing down to the right point. Um, now, obviously, uh, after having moved that in, it appears to not be at the right point. So I'll just grab this vertex and move it in. And we should get it snapped to this pink color, indicating that I'm straight across. I'm also going to bring the sleeve in just a little bit. And now, I'll unfold this to get the entirety of this shape. Okay, so there's one sleeve. Now the sleeves are going to be symmetrical. I always want to make sure that whatever happens to one sleeve happens to the other. 
So instead of just copying and pasting, we can instance these objects here in the software. So control C, control V will copy and paste, but control D will duplicate symmetrically. So when you control D to duplicate symmetrically, you're going to see there's a blue outline around this panel now. That outline is linked to this outline. You can see there's a little line holding these things to each other. Um, that line is indicating that these two things are bound to one another. So if ever I go and manipulate one point, the direct opposite happens on the other sleeve. So that's a cool way of making sure that those panels end up doing the right thing. So now I can go place these in 3D. So I'm going to turn this one towards the avatar and move it over to where her arm is and over here. Now if you did go and position those little blue dots like so, you can actually click on one of these blue dots and this pattern will, let's like that, will wrap around that little blue dot. Which is kind of a neat thing to be able to do. You can see it automatically did the other side for us here as well. So we're almost ready to simulate. Uh, the only thing that needs doing, if I were to simulate now, these are just going to drop to the floor. So we need to sew them together. Over here on the 2D side, you'll notice that the first icons here are um, indicated by a little icon of a sewing machine. The first one is to select edges or to select um, sewing, which we haven't done any yet, any seams. The next one is to directly stitch seams. So this one um, is the segment sewing. So what you would do is you would click one edge and then click the edge you want to stitch it to. When you do that, you should see in your 3D viewport thread up here between those two panels. We always want to make sure the thread is straight going from point A to point B. The next one is the free sewing line. And what it allows you to do is it allows you to choose how long you want to stitch. So instead of going from vert to vert, you can actually just do a segment of the, the shirt in that way. Since that's not what I want, I'm going to go to my select seams, click on that one and delete it. And then I can go and re-add it in with the other tool. Something like that. I'll need to go across the shoulder and across the other shoulder so that those get stitched to each other. Lastly, the sleeve is going to get stitched from the inside to the front and the outside to the back and the outside to the back. Now I do need to stitch the sleeve to itself, but if I do that now, I'm going to get a penetration problem here where it's actually just going to go right through her arm. So I'm going to leave it like this for now. And uh, I'm going to go up here in the top of the 3D viewport to the first icon, the little downward pointing arrow. And I'm going to click that, which is going to simulate the fabric. This will drape it on my avatar. And I can click while simulate is turned on on the fabric and drag it to wherever I like. So I'm going to try and drape this sleeve a little bit closer on her arm to where I want it. I'll do the same thing with this one. Click and drag out. So something like this. And then I'm going to pause the simulation. Spacebar turns on and off the simulation, so it's a good shortcut to know. Uh, and now that I've got the sleeves in a way that I can stitch them together, I'll just go and do that. And just doing one, because they're symmetrical, will do the other. And if I simulate again, that should true up the sleeves. And we now have a shirt on our avatar. The white is a little, uh, a little hard to see here. So I'm going to go into our default fabric. And I'm going to go change its color. And I, I don't really care what color it is. I just want to have something that's not white, uh, which is going to allow me to see it a little bit better. And uh, I'm now going to start paying attention a little bit more to the, uh, the shapes that I'm getting. So I can see on her shoulder here, there's a really ugly bump coming out. And that bump is an indication of just how harsh I made the curvature here. So I'm going to go into my edit curvature, and I'm going to lessen those points a little bit to just soften that up. 
like so. And when I re-simulate, that should give me a little bit of a softer transition here. So that's not too bad. If the uh, the sleeves are a touch long, we can always go and grab these edges and just holding shift, drag them up and simulate again. And we should get a shorter sleeve. I can go into the, uh, the shirt here from the front and maybe add a little bit of curvature since this is a, uh, a female shirt. Maybe something like that. And I'll do a little bit of the same here in the back. And again, I'll just simulate it again, and that'll cinch it in a little bit closer on her waist, or on her, uh, her natural waist. Let's go and place a pocket over her breast. To do that, I'm gonna use a new tool here. These next four shapes across the top or uh, rather the three and the dart, um, these are going to be for creating uh, internal shapes. Internal shapes are used as stitching, essentially. Um, so right now, each of these panels has stitching around the outside or a seam around the outside. But if you wanted to stitch something to a place on the inside without having a hole there, we could do that by using one of these internal shapes. So for instance, if I were to go and draw a rectangular pocket shape here, You'll see that it shows us in uh, in 3D where that object is, which is a little too close to the side. I'm going to move it in here a little bit further. Okay. I'm going to go add a point, again, by right-clicking and typing in 50%. This is right in the bottom, and I'll just grab that point and move it down. And I now have, essentially, the shape of a pocket. I'm just going to simulate here again as she's poking through her avatar, or the uh, avatar is poking through the garment. So you can actually see there is a little bit of an indication of this being here, that I actually went and put stitches there, but it didn't really alter the shape of the shirt. The next thing that I want to do is I want to double-click on this pattern, right-click, and I'm going to clone it as a pattern. This, I'll just go and move up above, and this is going to create for me the fabric of my pocket, which I can go into my free stitching and stitch all the way around. And then grab this one and stitch all the way around. And we can go place that object a little bit closer and simulate again. And she'll now have a pocket on her chest. This is the same kind of pattern you would want to do for anything else in here. I'm going to do a little bit of um, seam taping as well. I want to kind of make sure that the shirt fits in a really nice way. So I'm going to grab um, essentially all the external edges of the uh, of the shirt here. Um, I'm going to do also the... Uh, the separation between the sleeves and the neckline. So these edges here, these are all the ones that face outside as well as the one around the sleeve. Uh, I don't have to do the symmetrical one because it is comping this one. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go into my seam taping and I'm gonna click on that. And you'll notice that this will have um, added seam taping here, which I can turn on for these edges and I'm just going to increase its size to 20 and what this will have done is added a thickness to those areas um, that is going to be a little bit more rigid so when I simulate this um, you'll see that that kind of holds the shirt upright a little bit better um, it's almost giving your peaked shoulders here um, which I think just makes this look a little bit better okay with that done Let's talk about getting this out of Marvelous Designer and into ZBrush. The first thing we need to do is get the simulation to look a little bit better. So right now, um, there aren't a lot of wrinkles on this thing. Uh, and what is there appears to be li really low res. So we're going to up the resolution of our asset. 
Now, in Marvelous Designer, resolution is handled in the opposite way of all other 3D software. So in other 3D software, you're talking about polygon count or vertex count, where a number gets larger and you get more density. Here, we're not dealing with that. We're actually dealing with what's called particle distance. And this number indicates how far apart each vertex is. So this is the direct opposite here. A larger number means the vertices are further apart. So larger number, smaller vert count. I'm going to drop this down to 10. And I'll simulate again. And again, I'll just let the software catch up. You know, I can go and pull on the shirt a little bit here to try and get some wrinkling in the areas where I'd like it to get wrinkled. So a little bit more in her elbow would be nice. I can also go into this fabric and go and change my preset. Let's make this cotton. And now that'll again affect the way that the garment is being simulated. I'll select my pattern again and I'll drop from 10 to 5 and simulate again. You can see I'm starting to get performance hits here as I try to rotate or move. However, it is starting to simulate nicely. If we go and look at our hips here through the fabric, I can actually see the low poly nature of my avatar through the fabric. So I'm going to click on my avatar and go to smooth avatar and turn that on. This is going to tessellate the avatar and smooth it out a little bit. So when I simulate again, you can see that that's mostly gone. Once you're pleased with your clothing, I'm going to select it and go to File, Export Selected, and I'm going to put this inside the same folder here and this is going to be called shirt sim for simulated. Now in the export settings, there's a few things I want to make sure that I keep. Um, first of all, I want to make sure that this is going to be thin and not thick and that I want unified UV coordinates. I also want to make sure that I'm not welding this together. So each piece of fabric is going to be its own separate piece. And I'll show you why I'm going to do that. Once this has been exported, I need a second export. And that second export is going to make my life a little bit easier in ZBrush. First, I'm going to reset the 2D arrangement. Now, this is going to make our 3D match our 2D. And I'm just going to export this as well as shirt. And this is going to be flat. I'm going to use the exact same settings. And then just hit undo to get my shirt back into its proper shape again. Now, let's bounce on over to Max. Let's make our avatar dark here as well. And let's go and import those two shirts. So I'm first gonna import the simulated shirt to ensure that it's in the right place. And just like that, it's in the right place. I'm also going to import the flat one. Which looks like that. Now before I do anything, I do want to manipulate the flat one here a little bit. I'm going to grab all of its vertices and put them at 0 and Y and 0 and X. This is just going to center them uh, inside of the, uh, the viewport a little bit better here. Now you can see these things are pretty dense when it comes to their uh, topology. Uh, but that's good. That's what we want. I'm going to hide the avatar for the time being. And I'm going to grab the simulated shirt. And I'm going to place a modifier on here called Morpher. Uh, Morpher. There we are. And what Morpher is going to allow me to do is use an empty slot here, which I'm going to pick from scene. And I'll click on this flat shirt. And now I get a slider here that allows me to morph the shirt between the two patterns. This is why we needed the same export settings for Marvelous Designer. Now I can actually go and delete that other pattern and go just down to this shirt. 
So we can actually simulate it out. Now you'll notice that Max actually keeps all of the shading intact, even though this thing is completely flat. So it's not actually editing the normals. Now the reason we want to do this is that this shirt is made up of all triangles, and while Marvelous Designer can spit out quads, um, I'm going to want a much better topology to follow than this. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to move our time slider to frame 50 and turn on auto key and uh, crank up that shirt flat. I can turn off auto key now. And the reason I do this is that instead of needing to select the shirt, now I can just move the timeline. So that's going to make life a little bit easier. I'm going to leave it at frame 50. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to retopologize this. Now I'm going to do this in a really quick and really easy way, um, which is just going to start with a plane, and I'll do the front of her shirt here first. So there it is there. There's my plane. I know you can't see it at the moment. Um, I'm going to turn on F5, which is my default um, shortcut here to show me the wireframe on this object alone. And I'm going to kill all of the segments on this, so I just have a singular polygon and what I can do now is I can start laying out the topology now normally what I do when I do this is I go around the perimeter um, as it's a lot easier to do than anything else and so I'll find out how big I want my quads to be and I'll make this about that size or something like that and then I'm just gonna go and reposition this so that the vertices are on the outside so there something like that now I'll go into extend mode in the freeform modeling tools and I'll go and bring this guy out. We'll find the center of the shirt. And I'll place this guy in the center. I'll add a swift loop in here. And I'll bring this down and a swift loop and a swift loop. And just like that, I've got the neckline done. I can use extend to bring this out here capture the back again I'll add swift loops and probably one more it didn't look like it was nice enough and I'm gonna use my align tool here I'm gonna grab all of this let's reset its X form and I'll flatten it in Y now that straighten or evenly distribute doesn't always keep things as clean as it should so I'm just going to go and tweak these a little bit. Now I'm going to be very uh, careful when I'm doing the topology around the perimeter of this thing. Uh, but when it comes to the entire interior, I'm not actually going to care so much. Uh, and I'll show you why once we get there. So I'm going to bring this guy down to here. And I'll place this one on the corner. And this one will be the next one down. I'll jump back over to my swift loop which I can bring over so from there to there I'll swift loop again and again and again I'll go back to extend I'm going to try and keep these at a 90 degree angle here from the outer edge and again and I'll do one more something like that <coughs> excuse me next I'll go back into extend here and I'm gonna bring this guy all the way down placing it on the bottom of the shirt where again I'll add another swift loop which again I'll bring in to match the outer the outer edge of the shirt And then I'll swift loop again. And those ones appear to have lined up exactly where I want them. So something like that. Now I'm a little bit denser in the sleeve here than I am in the body, but I think it's going to be okay. If need be, I can always add more later. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this center line and bring it all the way down here since the shirt is symmetrical 
there's no point in retopologizing both halves. So I'm going to do that, uh, followed by adding a swift loop in here, followed by bridging in between. Wrong one. This one. Followed by swift looping. Some more loops in there. And uh, in order to figure out how many loops I'm going to need here, I'm going to need to start topoing up here. So let's do, I'm going to do one in the center here. This is in between her breasts, but I'm more kind of lining it up with the armpit more than anything else here of the shirt. Um, and what I can do now is really just go in and start quadding up these guys. And again, I'm being crazy messy here as I do this. That's okay. Um, I'm going to bring this one down and go across again. This is going to come up here. And this one is going to become part of this shirt. So I can delete this big one and put this in its place. I can bring that whole row down. Let's do it to here. I'll delete that one. So there's one, two, three. Go back to this and bridge. And you can see that this is going to end up giving me the shape that I want. Again, I'm going to delete that one. And I'm just going to add in a loop here for each of the polygons that I have that I'll oops, just bridge across. And then uh, this guy is going to come down. And this guy is going to come down. And I can bring these down and there. So now I can actually see how many edges I'm going to need in my polygons. So this guy, minus him, there are 12. So if I go down here and select without this one, I have 9. So 10, 11, 12. So just like that, these things should now match up quite nicely. I'm just going to go and uh, delete this polygon. Go to Extend and bring this all the way down. And delete the uh, this one. Come on. Really? Okay. That one just does not want to delete. So we'll do it the old-fashioned way. Okay. So now I can bridge uh, through here. And again, I don't care how messy these are. As long as I have the right number, I can use the software to straighten them out. Oops, wrong one. There we go. So that's good. I've got that connected all the way down. Now I just got to find out how many cross sections I need. So I go from here and deselect these ones and these ones. I can see that there are 14 polygons and I have two. So Swift Loop will make three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. So now I'll just grab these two guys. And we'll just bridge everything together here in the middle. And that'll close that up. Okay, cleanup time. So I'll grab the center edge, which I'll align in X. And I'll move it back over in X until it's actually at the center point. I'm going to grab these and evenly space them. So that evenly space that I'm using is under modeling. Uh, edge loops, loop tools, and space. I've got it on a shortcut of Control S because I use it a lot. And so, just like that, I'll do the center line here too. All of this is now the perimeter, at least, is all nice and clean. So, watch this. Now, I'm just going to go to my relax tool. Let's make sure these things are all lined up in Y. I'm going to go to my relax tool, go to my relax options. And I'll crank up the amount, and I'll crank up the iterations. And you can see this is starting to give me really nice clean topology. There is a little bit of a, uh, of a mess kind of going on in the chest here. Uh, and as it turns out, I kind of expected this. 
And uh, the reason I'm okay with this is that that's where her breasts are. And uh, what I'm going to do is just grab some of the polygons here. Um, not what I wanted. So what I'm going to try and do is just grab some of the polygons in between her breasts. Where the shirt is going to need to be a little bit rounder. So I think there. And uh, I'm going to inset these. Apparently there's a hole. Let's isolate this guy. There it is. So I'm going to go and inset this um, to about here. And I'll just inset it again. And then I'm going to delete the polygons along the central line. And that's because, again, these ones are going to go along that center line. So again, if I grab all the vertices here, and I just hit the relax button again. It should relax them out. You can actually see I'm getting a rounded shape around where her breast is. Uh, I'm just going to go and evenly space this edge again. And then I'll just go and relax one more time. And there. A little bit better like that, I think. Um, if you find you're getting too much of like a downward angle here, uh, the trick is just to add more vertices in. Uh, essentially, every edge I add is going to bring the center side up. Um, but I think that'll be okay like that. We'll have to test it out. So now I'm just going to grab a vertex along the center line and hit the symmetry button. And there is now the front of her shirt, which again, I should make sure with relax on. I'm just going to go and relax these again here. I'll have to reset the settings again. But you can see that once it's uh, symmetried, um, this does absolutely affect those things. So we're a little bit cleaner and straighter now. So that's cool. I'll just grab this and holding shift, duplicate it over to the other side. So this is going to become the back of the shirt. Now there's a few things I need to edit and a few things I cannot edit. So first and foremost, uh, she has no breasts on her back, and so that's going to need to be corrected. So I'm going to need to remove those two loops that I did, like so, um, and essentially go in and stitch these things back in to where they were. Um, so I can do this with the, um, let's see, you know what I'll do? Let's do this a faster way. I'm going to get rid of one more edge loop on here. Like that. Um, so that I'm actually shy one edge all the way around, uh, which will allow me to use the uh, extend mode here um, to bridge this up. Or I can go through here and bridge. Odd, I'm off. 16. 18. I removed too many. So bridge. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Yeah, not those. Four, five. Bridge. Bridge. Oh. There we are. And that. So again, I'm just going to grab all the vertices on our back here. And relax them again. It's a little bit better. I think that I've still got an edge loop in there that doesn't need to be there. Which is this one. Uh, but it's fine. I'll leave it there, just for speed's sake. Um, 
And then our neckline here too. Uh, I'm going to go and remove this row here. And uh, start cleaning this up. So instead of having a uh, neckline in here, I can actually just go and bring these across, across, and across, and across. That should be the middle point. And these guys here, here, and there. And so again, I'm just going to go and bridge. And then I'm going to go and space these guys. And I don't want to edit the sides here because they need to line up already with where they are. But if I go and relax this now, that'll give me a cleaner back on this thing. Okay. So there's those two done. Um, and then the sleeves. So in order to get the sleeves to match up, I can see that I'm going to need 17 polygons that go from the center out and 17 that go from the center out since it's going to weld to those two things. So I'll start with a single polygon, which I'll bring in. I'll find the center point here. And I can't use symmetry anymore because this object is no longer symmetrical. But that's okay. So this guy's going to go all the way down here, and this one's going to go all the way down here, and this one is just going to line up straight underneath him. Like so. Um, and now I just need to connect these. Uh, let's do a swift loop here first. So again, I need to make sure that there are 17 edges in there. So there's our 17 polygons. So there's two. There's four. There's eight. There's 16. And actually, I'm going to do this in a smarter way instead of having to move all of these things. Um, if I move these guys into position, the swift loop will take care of the rest. So there's uh, 2, 4, 6, 8. This will give me 16. And I'll just add one more in here, which is 17. And I'm just going to space those out. And then again, just ever so carefully pull these things back on to the pattern. So then I have usable topology here. I don't want to miss the pattern by being outside of it. And I don't want to be too far inside of it because that'll result in a, uh, in a gap once we fix this up. Okay, that's not so bad. You see this guy missed a little bit too. Right on. Okay. I'm just going to take all of those polygons and make sure my rotate snaps is on. And I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees. I'll make sure it's an element. And I'm going to move it over. I'll go to my vertices and I'll turn on uh, my vertex snaps. And I'll just snap these two things together. Um, followed by, let's turn off the snaps now. Welding these two things together. Oh, this thing is still inside out. Let me flip it. I want to make sure that I did get that flat. I did. Okay, I'm going to use this opportunity here to flatten these things out again. 
Okay, now I'm not going to need all of these edges to run all the way down the sleeve. I'm going to need to uh, get rid of some of them. So what I'm going to do is I'll go to extend mode here, and I'll just run straight across here. Um, and this will give me a little bit of a means of closing this up. So I'm going to put a center line in. And then now uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm going to go over four. One, two, three, four. And uh, I'm going to pull a vertex out of here, giving me a quad in here. And I'll do the same thing on the other side in the same place. Something like that. Um, and you can see now how this is going to work. So I'll pull these guys down. I'll put a swift loop in here and in here. And then uh, I'm going to need one, two, three more swift loops. So I might as well keep doing this. One, two, three. One, two, and three. Go back to my extend mode. And I can start cleaning this up. There. This is going to run all the way across. And all the way across. This is the long way of doing it here. should bring this up and weld. Uh, and then start bridging across. Again, I'll bring this out and bridge. Out, bridge. And then we'll just bridge these guys. Then, I'll take this all the way down. I'll take, whoops, this one all the way down. And this one all the way down. Followed by, it's not going to let me select the one that I want. Deleting those. Flattening them out in Z. Bridging the gap. Followed by spacing these out. Now, the uh, the space out isn't working here in uh, in a way that I'd like it to. And so I'm going to need to uh, uh, rethink this, um, which isn't all that tough to do. I'm just going to go put some edges in here. And, uh, and get them to the point where they're about square. And what I'll do is I'll just go into this element here and relax it. There's my relax. There's my relax. And you can see that's going to work almost everything out for me, except for the bottom. And uh, that's just fine because it allows me to see... Whoops. It allows me to see exactly where I'm off. Um, which is this vertice needs to go here, and this vertice needs to go here. And now I can space those. Do that with edges. There we go. And then again, I'll just grab this element and relax it again. I'm going to make sure that running up and down the sides of the sleeves, here and here, is also evenly spaced. I could see that it wasn't based off the shape that I was getting. And this guy needs to be evenly spaced. Okay, so now if I relax again, we should get a really nice clean sleeve. Which, if I hold shift, I can bring over here. As a new element. Lastly, the pocket. Um, I have two options with the pocket. The first is I can weld the pocket to here. Um, which would mean I need to put a new set of edges following the shape of the pocket, um, followed by retopologizing the pocket, or I can retopologize the pocket and actually just have it show up as a normal map. So whether or not you want to see the pocket as part of uh, your higher density mesh, I'm going to do the latter. I'm going to make the uh, the pocket just part of the normal map, and so this is going to require me to just retopologize the pocket, uh, which is a little bit of an easier thing to do. So I'm going to go and, let's see, move this over here. And I'll bring this one down here and this one over here. Give me one big quad here for the polygon. 
something like that. And then uh, I'm going to add in a center line, which I can use to bring down into here. And then I'll just select through here, add some connections. Let's do eight. Sure, eight looks good. And I'm going to add some down in here as well. I'll do four. Followed by just grabbing the uh, vertices of the pocket and relaxing them. Okay. Now that I've got this thing all lined up here and I've got some really clean topology on this, uh, this is where we're going to do some of the magic in this. And so the first thing that I want to do, um, if you look at what we're looking at, these are beautiful UVs. So let's turn these into UVs. So step one, we're going to apply a UVW map modifier to this. I'm going to do this as planar. I want to make sure that it's done in Y. And I'm just going to make sure that these two numbers are the same. This is just going to make sure that I get a square projection. So that's what my UVs are going to look like inside the 0 to 1 box. So convert that to an editable poly. And there, UVs are done. The next thing I want to do is go down and apply a skin wrap. Now, skin wrap is a really cool modifier that allows you to wrap clothing to an avatar or to a model. In this case, we're going to use the simulated shirt as our character. So essentially, their new topology is the clothing, and the old topology is the, uh, is the avatar. So when I go and animate this back, it'll bring my new topology to where it exists on the low poly or on the high poly, like that. With that done, I'm going to delete the shirt. First, let's convert this one to an editable poly to preserve its shape, followed by deleting this one. And now, here's my new shirt. So if I go and select all my polygons, I'll just give them all smoothing group number one, so it's nice and clean. It's not too bad. Um, we're going to need to seam up the holes and weld together all of the um, there we are all of the uh, the gaps that we made here. So you can see in places where it didn't quite meet the pattern, uh, match the pattern, it's a little bit off, but I think that's going to be okay. So I'm going to go to these vertices. I'm going to go to weld, and I'm going to slowly increase the threshold here until it appears that everything is welded. I'll hit OK. And just to double check that this has worked, I'm going to use the open borders. And we should only have the neck, pocket, the bottom of both sleeves, and the bottom of the shirt. And you can see I have nothing selected. So with that done, I'm going to export this now. Let's move its uh, pivot point here to the origin. I'm going to reset its X form. Effect pivot only, and we'll zero it out. And then we can export this for ZBrush. Shirt. Retopo. Now, I'm not overwriting any of my files here, and this is also being done for a very important reason. Back in the world of ZBrush, I'm going to go to my uh, subtool. And I'm going to append a blank object, the Polymesh 3D star, which I'll select and import my shirt retopo. And it should just appear on the model exactly where you wanted it to be. You'll also notice that we lost a lot of the detail from Marvelous Designer. It doesn't look anywhere near as good as it did in Marvelous. Um, which again, is not a problem here. I'm going to append another Polymesh 3D star which I'm going to go and import the simulated shirt, which has a lot more topology. Let's hide our avatar. We'll turn on a wireframe here. So here is my new shirt on my old shirt. So what I'm going to do is under the subtool palette, I'm going to go to project, and I'm going to hit control D, subdivide my new shirt, and project all to make it match the high poly one. Control D, project all, and eventually what we want to have is as much of this little fluctuations between these two colors as we can. So 
something like that. I'm going to do it one more time. And just like that, I can go back up to the original shirt, shirt sim, and delete it. And I should have just our clean, new, high-res shirt. Now, there is going to be a little bit of ugliness on the shirt, and part of the reason behind that is that we took triangular topology and, uh, and matched it to quad topology. But watch this. If I just go and lightly smooth out my new shirt, I can actually smooth out all of the uglies that were there from that process, giving me the ability to get something really nice and clean. The other thing is that this thing is already unwrapped. We did our UVs in Max, and we can use those UVs here in ZBrush to allow us to do other things as well. So for instance, let me just finish smoothing this guy out a little bit. So one of the things that I can do is I can go to uh, my polygroup section. And in here, we can group with UVs. So what this is going to do is everything that is its own UV island will now get its own color. Which is really, really useful if you wanted to do something like adding some seams in. So here, I'm going to go and isolate the front panel of her shirt and mask it and bring back all of the other ones. In fact, let's do the back here as well. Do these two things together. There we go. So now, if I go and use my inflate brush, and I'm gonna do this really delicately here, I'm gonna turn on symmetry. I'm just gonna run along that gap between the patterns. So this is the, I'm doing this on the sleeve and just kind of running the inflate brush really delicately along that area. I can then go in with a little bit of a smooth, to soften it up, and again, inflate it just a little bit more. I want to be careful I'm not deforming the shirt too much. Um, but what I can do then is invert this and do the process again, this time on the body, the torso part of the fabric. And again, smooth it back as I'm kind of doing this. And when I clear the mask, you get a really nice um, fabric seam in between these two pieces of fabric. The really nice thing about this is that that fabric seam is actually on your UV seam. And so it becomes really nice and easy to hide when you do this. Um, and so I can do the same thing here if I wanted to separate the uh, the front from the back. I could go here and again run my inflate along here like so, followed by doing the same thing again with the front piece and smoothing it back as well. And again, I'll get a really nice seam following those pieces. The really, really nice thing about this too is that um, not only are you now just sculpting in ZBrush on something that looks remarkably like a shirt, um, but this, you know, fits the avatar incredibly well. Um, it actually is tailored to their body dimensions. Um, but another thing that you can do here too, I'm just opening up another browser here, um, let's show you how good those UVs are. Um, if we go and look up uh, plaid, and I find a tiling um, image of plaid here, which is one of the hardest things to do on clothing. Um, really. Let's try plaid with two Ds. No, one D. None of these things are tiling plaid. That one is. 
Okay, so let me just throw this on my desktop. Uh, let's see, let's put it up here, desktop, and save. And if I go into ZBrush here, just to show you how clean these UVs are, I'm going to go to my texture map, and I'll go and import from the desktop that plaid. This will fit exactly the way you expect it to. Um, the other thing I can do here is go to my UV map, and if I go to uh, create and go into the repeats here, I'm do this five by five. We can get a little bit more plaid tiling on here. And you can see that that is absolutely perfect in terms of uh, UVs. The uh, the fabric is doing exactly what you expect it to do. Uh, even in the area where her, where her breasts are, you can actually see the plaid is warping um, as the fabric is being stretched around the shape of her breast. So yeah, there you have it. Um, my entire process um, essentially shrunk down into about an hour. Um, there's a lot more to it that I do. There's a lot, uh, a lot more sculpting that I do in ZBrush and other things like that. But in essence, that is my Marvelous Designer pipeline. And so, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, I hope you've... Uh, learned a little bit from it and are able to now use Marvelous Designer in your workflow. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.